this spring I killed around 150 tomato plants and it's been bothering me ever since and I'm bound to determine to figure out why and today's the day. So you guys know I'm no stranger to starting seeds. I've done it every year for a really long time. So I started my same process this year. I put my seeds in these little guys with some potting soil. Uh, I put them in my basement under grow lights and everything started off really good. My tomatoes all germinated, everything was happy. And then about two weeks into it, I started to notice that things felt like they'd stopped. And at first I thought it was my imagination, but then the more I watched it, I realized stuff wasn't growing. It had its first set of leaves and then that was it. And eventually if I waited long enough, the plants would start to kind of get yellow and then die off. So I knew something was up. So at first I thought maybe my grow lights were too bright. I wondered if I was watering not enough or too much. I wondered if there was like a fungus in my grow trays. And I ruled all of that out. And I realized it all came down to one thing. The potting soil. So I've always just used regular old potting soil and put them in my trays every year. No problem. I never have to add fertilizer or anything else. They just grow like crazy. I might pot up a few times and we're good to go. But that wasn't the case this year. So although my guess was potting soil, I wasn't confirmed until we decided to do an experiment. And we took the little tiny tomatoes that were struggling and put them in a fresh container, a bigger container with a different brand of potting soil. And within 24 hours, the tomatoes started to change. They got greener, they started to grow. Not all of them, a lot of them still died because they were too tra traumatized but we saw an instant difference and that's what I knew. Something was up with the soil that I was using. So this year I used Kellogg's Organics potting soil for my seedlings. And um, other years I've used different brands, but something funny happened when I posted about my troubles over my Instagram page, I got a ton of responses of people saying the same thing had happened. And while people were saying they had problems with a lot of different brands, the one that kept coming up the most was the Kellogg's brand. So. I can't help but wonder if something's going on. I'm tired of playing the guessing game, so we're gonna get data today. And I'm really, really excited about how we're gonna do this because I'm nerding out just a little bit. So if you're in any of my programs or my courses, you, you know that I love soil testing because it gives you data, it gives you information instead of guessing. And you can Google tips for building your soil, but really it's all just shots in the dark until you know what you're dealing with. The problem is up until now, you've had to go to universities or the process of getting your soil tested is a little more complicated and a little more expensive. So you guys have heard me talk about Redmond Real Salt. They're the salt I use for everything here in our homestead. Well, they also have a arm of their company called Redmond Agriculture, and they just launched this home soil test kit, literally designed for gardeners and homesteaders like us. And this is going to tell us exactly what we need to know about why all my tomatoes healed over and died in stunning fashion this spring. So you can order these off their website. I'll put a link down in the show notes. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is register your kit online, which is super easy. It takes only a few minutes, I already did that. Um, we're gonna be doing one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven samples today because I'm testing all the things here on the homestead uh, and then we'll get all the data back. Okay, so while Kellogg's is the one I have the most questions about, I kinda decided to go a little crazy. So I went to the garden store and bought a number of different brands and I just wanna see how they compare. So the next one I'm gonna try is Happy Frog. Um, I've had really good results with this one over the years, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, so now I'm gonna test the soil in my garden, which honestly, if you're gonna get a kit like this, that's probably what you're gonna wanna test anyway. I'm just kinda nerding out on the potting soil just a little bit because of all my issues this spring. But when you test your garden soil, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're gathering it from about five different spots and then mixing it up in a bucket and then taking a sample from that composite. So you're just really getting a good cross section. So I'm gonna grab that real quick. I also want to test my greenhouse soil, although it's probably not too different from my raised beds, but I figured why not? And then I also want to test my compost pile. Now 
all that's left is to stick them in the mailbox. I should have results within about seven or eight business days. So my predictions, I think my garden soil is pretty decent. I mean, I have good growth, everything's pretty green and happy. So we'll see if I'm right on that. Um, with the potting soils, I think that the soils that gave me trouble potentially are gonna be low in nitrogen, but we'll see if I'm right. When I posted about this over on Instagram, a lot of people were you know, trying to figure out why this is happening, and I'm kind of the same way. Um, and I honestly, though, don't think these companies, if there is a deficiency in their soil, had any malicious intent. I think that it probably has to do with supply chain shortages and maybe putting extra of one ingredient in a mix because they can't get another ingredient. I think it's that sort of dynamic. I really don't think any of this happened on purpose, but it is kind of crazy that it's happening to a lot of us across the country all at the same time, and this never happened before. So I'm really excited for this data. Okay, we have some results. So results are pretty interesting and some of my predictions were dead on, some were not. So let's start off with the big question, da -da -dun, Kellogg's potting soil, the one that gave me so much issue and killed all my tomatoes. What did they come back as? Well, uh, as I predicted earlier, they are extremely low in nitrogen and extremely low in phosphorus. And that makes total sense why we were seeing what we saw with things germinating and then just stopping. Okay, so I did. we did our four other soils here, and their results were pretty similar, uh, and they were quite different than Kellogg's, which again, makes sense because when I switched over to these soils from Kellogg's, uh, we saw a vastly different result. So we did Happy Frog, which is like the Fox Farms brand. We did miracle Grow Performance Organics. We did regular miracle Grow, and we did Stay Green, which is I think kind of a like a in-store brand. And they were all pretty similar. They had high nitrogen, high phosphorus, high potassium. Um, some of their pHs were a little higher, some were in the optimal range, but nothing here that I would be overly concerned about. So I feel like these are all pretty standard across the board. I don't know if you can hear the machinery noise in the background. If you can, I'm sorry. We're gonna blame it on Christian. He is working on some fencing and some digging and it's really noisy back there. Okay, so the plot continues to thicken because I've been chatting with Kellogg's potting soil after this whole incident. So I knew something was off and I wanted Kellogg's to have a chance to give their side of the story. So we talked to two different folks at Kellogg's. Um, one gentleman responded to me and said that raised bed and potting mix from Kellogg's is not formulated as an organic seed starter. Um, we recommend scooping a hole, a hole in the mix and filling it with another seed starter and then you plant the seeds in that. As the plant matures, you don't have to transplant because the root mass will grow into the potting mix. The presence of yellowing leaves indicates a nutrient deficiency, which we knew, right? Organic soils have a lower NPK, that's nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, than synthetic soils. Veggies in particular are heavy feeders and use up nutrients in the soil quickly. You need to fertilize with an organic fertilizer once the little leaves appear to provide a slow release of nutrients. And then again, every five to six weeks during the growing season. Makes sense, right? Um, and th to be fair, the Kellogg's bag didn't say seed starting mix anywhere on it. Here's my problem with that. Every year I've ever started seeds, I've used regular potting mixes, including like the ones I have here in my other test results. Even though they're not labeled as seed starters, they tend to work just fine because they have adequate nitrogen. And yeah, I may need to pot up as my plant gets bigger and outgrows my container, but I've never needed to fertilize those seedlings immediately or plant them in other mixes. So that this explanation doesn't quite make full sense to me. Okay, and then we talked to another gentleman at Kellogg's named Zach, and he was very helpful and friendly and willing to chat with us. And we asked him about shortages in supplies because we all know that the supply chains are weird across all industries. And we were curious if maybe some of the supply chain shortages was affecting the potting soil companies. And maybe they're putting less of one thing or having to substitute and that's causing these changes that we're seeing. Uh, and Zach did confirm they're having shortages in peat moss and synthetic fertilizers across the industry. Now he said the peat moss issue doesn't affect them because they use composted wood chips in their uh, mixes, which I can absolutely confirm because they have a lot of wood in their mix. It's pretty chunky, it's pretty coarse, which is one of the reasons it's not my favorite because you're always having to pick out big old pieces of wood. 
Um, and sometimes that carbon in the wood can also affect how the nitrogen is working in the soil because they tend to kind of cancel each other out sometimes. And then to Zach's second point about the synthetic fertilizer shortages, which we're seeing all over the news, he said um, Kellogg's has only ever used organic fertilizers, so they weren't impacted at the beginning of the shortage, but as most manufacturers are now having to switch over to organic, now they're all kind of facing some issues trying to find the ingredients. So I don't know, it still doesn't make complete sense to me why it changed so much, right? Like so many people are reporting issues with these potting soils that they didn't have issues before. So I still feel like something changed. I don't think it was nefarious. I don't think it was to try to hurt home gardeners. I think it's just uh, a side effect of the weird times that we live in. So um, Kellogg's did offer to make it right. However, they said if you have been affected by their potting soil, you are able to reach out to them uh, explain what happened if you have receipts that's ideal and if you mention my name Jill Winger they will give you a refund, a refund for up to five bags of soil that you purchased and had problems with so I thought that was really kind of them I don't want to smear them in any way but I just want you to be aware if you are buying their mixes to start seeds buyer beware it's not going to be a good option um, I also talked to some people on social media that said they bought their bag Kellogg's bags of soil to fill their raised beds and start the garden raised beds and they have not great results, stuff wouldn't grow. So I would say if you're gonna use Kellogg's, it is cheaper, right? You're gonna to wanna to add definite nitrogen fertilizer to that soil immediately to make sure you don't run into the same issues that I ran into. I learned, learned my lesson with potting soils, so I'm gonna be really, really careful what I use to start my seeds from here on out. Uh, but now I wanna talk about my garden results because I got some stuff I didn't expect in this one. Okay, so first off, the results are my raised beds. Like you saw in the video earlier, um, I just took some samples from a bunch of the beds and mixed them together to get a composite sample. And I was surprised to find out that my raised bed garden is low in nitrogen, high in phosphorus, and low in potassium. So this is interesting to me because when I had this tested a few years ago, I was too high in nitrogen. And so I kind of stopped adding compost for a while. I I've done it a few times, but not much. So again, this is something I couldn't have predicted, I didn't expect, uh, and my stuff is still growing pretty well. I don't have complaints, but I know moving forward, I probably want to adjust it and add some nutrients to the soil so I don't run into problems down the road. Now, as far as my other um, minerals, I was high in calcium, I was good, optimal, in magnesium and sodium, but I was low in iron, manganese, zinc, copper, and boron. And I know I've seen that iron deficiency show up in the past. I've seen my green bean plants, they kind of yellow. They grow, but they're just yellow and not healthy looking. Um, and I've added some iron here and there in the past, but I think it's probably time to address that again. So the cool thing that I love about Redmond and this soil test is you, they recommend a product. That rooster is really loud. They recommend a product that is balanced for this soil result and I can add that into my garden. And you guys know I'm a fan of compost and organic matter and I'm gonna keep adding those things as well, but I feel like um, I'm a little bit off even with the compost additions and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, and so I wanna add some of these other products to help get me where I need to be. I dirt. didn't know you were going this deep today. Huh? I didn't know we were going this deep today. So next up, my compost pile results. I didn't expect this at all. Uh, believe it or not, my compost is low in nitrogen, which I didn't even think that was possible considering it's basically straight manure. So I did a in-depth interview with the Redmond Agriculture guys on a recent Freedom Foundry uh, playbook call and that's our members area where we get into really deep homesteading topics and they had mentioned that compost isn't always high in nitrogen and I'm like weird but I'm sure mine is so sure enough uh, they were right this isn't high in nitrogen I'm still trying to figure out why that would be because most of my compost pile is manure and manure is just straight up nitrogen for the most part so a couple theories I'm gonna keep digging into this and I'm gonna talk to Redmond's again and get their thoughts um, I have a, a bit of hay, right? We have some hay that mixes in as we clean pins. So I don't know if I had so much hay in the sample that I took that it kind of locked up some of the nitrogen because hay is carbon and manure is nitrogen. And maybe that balance wasn't right. So it kind of canceled it out. Um, another option is this pile is exposed to all the elements, the wind and the sun and the moisture. So I don't know if it's been leaching some of that out into the ground. 
So that might be an option, um, but I'm gonna keep looking into this because I just assumed every time I put manure on the garden, I was infusing it with nitrogen and that might not be the case. Your compost isn't necessarily low in nitrogen. It just really depends on what it's made out of and how you have been composting it. But that's why it's really a good idea to test because you have such wide ranges. You just don't know until you get the data. All right, and my last result here is the greenhouse. And again, this one kind of surprised me. Um, we added compost to these beds almost two years ago. I haven't really added much since. And yet my results are that basically everything's high. High pH, high nitrogen, high phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, calcium, mag magnesium, and sodium, all high. Um, so it's weird because like, it came from my compost pile and it's still high in nitrogen. So maybe that's because it's under cover and it hasn't been washed away in the elements as much. Maybe the soil here was already uh, high in nitrogen. I don't know, because I didn't test before we started, but I just think that's fascinating and that would also account for the crazy growth we're seeing, right? When we have high nitrogen, that causes a lot of um, foliage growth and things like that. When it gets too high, sometimes you'll have less fruit production because the plant's just going up and out and it will produce less fruit. I'm not necessarily concerned about it at this point. We're still early in the season. I still expect to get a lot of tomatoes and a lot of peppers, but I do know if I don't see as much fruit production, it might be because my nitrogen is too high. So to uh, deal with this situation, I'm not gonna add any more compost for a while. And they did recommend that I use elemental sulfur um, that will help lower the pH because my pH is a little high. So I love these recommendations because I don't have to go spend a million hours on Google trying to figure that out myself. I can just go with what they recommended. But anyway, I didn't expect the results on either of those, the compost, the greenhouse, or my raised bed garden. So once again, information is power. Okay, so that was a lot of info. So just to reiterate, if you have struggled with this problem, first off, know that your thumb is probably not as black as you thought. I had a lot of people messaging me saying, oh my gosh, all my seedlings died just like yours did and I thought it was my fault. Odds are it might be the potting soil's fault. So if you catch it early enough in the year, you can replant or you can carefully transplant the stunted seedlings into fresh soil. Now moving forward, if you start your seedlings in your house under grow lice like I do, I would be very, very careful which potting soil you use. Don't go for the bargain basement brands. Spend a little bit more to get a trusted, higher quality brand. I will be going with a Fox Farm, Happy Frog variety from here on out. It's worth it because let me tell you, when you lose 150 little baby seedlings, that's devastating and expensive in the long run. So it pays to buy the good stuff, stuff right off the bat. So these are some of the tomatoes that were originally stunted that we were able to transplant and save. So not all is lost. Um, but they did have a little bit harder start than I would have liked them to have. So if you're craving next level homesteading content like this, where we really get into the hows and whys of what makes your homestead or your garden tick, I want to invite you to join us over in Freedom Foundry. So Freedom Foundry is a members group I've been running for all of 2022 and each month we create a really actionable playbook for you that takes homesteading concepts and methods and really takes them down into that next level so you understand exactly how to keep your home homestead as efficient as possible. Some of the topics we've covered over the last few months have been how to save seeds, we talked about milk cows. We've even talked about how to opt out of your mortgage and keep your finances running more efficiently. And in the month of August, we're talking about soil. I have the Redmond guys joining me. We're talking about nutrients and how to uh, keep your soil as healthy as possible. What to do if you have a problem and what to do once you get your soil tested, how you can solve the deficiencies that you might uncover. So I'll drop a link for Freedom Foundry down in the show notes. Uh, we have a lot of fun over there. It's a good group of people and I think you really enjoy it.